Let your glory reign, shining like the day, King of heaven, come. Welcome. We are so glad you could join us on this fourth Sunday of Advent as we worship our God in heaven who sought fit to bring us peace through his Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, Peace to those on whom his favor rests. Today we light the fourth candle of Advent. This is the candle of love. Jesus demonstrated self-giving love in his ministry as the Good Shepherd. Advent is a time for kindness, thinking of others, and sharing with others. It is a time to love as God loved us by giving us his most precious gift. As God is love, let us also be love. In the book of Deuteronomy, we find these words. For the Lord your God is God of gods and Lord of lords, the great God, mighty and awesome, who is not partial and takes no bribe, who executes justice for the orphan and the widow, and who loves the strangers, providing them food and clothing. You shall also love the stranger, for you were strangers in the land of Egypt. Let us pray. Teach us to love, O Lord. May we also remember to put you first as we follow Christ's footsteps, that we may know your love and show it in our lives. As we prepare for our celebration of Jesus' birth, fill our hearts also with love for the world, that all may know your love and the one whom you have sent. Amen. In this season of expectant waiting, we're invited to the table, right here, right now. Coming to the Lord's table is a way to experience the grace of God. This being so, it's open to all. The only requirement is a sincere heart. The only barriers are created in our own hearts. So we come to confess our sins to God because we all fall short of His plan of perfect love. We come to free our hearts and our minds so we may remove the barriers we build between ourselves our God, and each other. And we come to receive, to receive all God has to give us. Let us prepare our hearts and minds now for Holy Communion.
Let us pray. God, who enters our lives in very unexpected ways, we pray that we will not be too narrow-minded to listen when you send us down new paths. We thank you for the example of Joseph, who shows us how to welcome you into our lives. We thank you also for the example of Jesus, who showed us how to live for you and others. We thank you most of all that Jesus was able to conquer sin and death for us on the cross. As we take this bread and cup, symbols of the sacrifice that gives us life, renew your spirit within us that we will carry that life with us into the world. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, amen. As Jesus gathered in the upper room with his disciples, as they reclined around the table at the meal, he took bread, he blessed it, broke it, gave it to them and said, this is my body, which is for you. Take and eat in remembrance of me. And after the meal, he took the cup and he said, this is my blood of the covenant poured out for the remission of sin. Whenever you drink it, remember me. And so each Lord's day, as we eat of the bread and we drink of the cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen.
go to God in prayer. God of glory, we come before you grateful for your open arms and loving embrace. We lay at your feet our praises, our needs, and concerns. We humbly ask that you consider each one. Place your name upon them that it may be done for your glory and according to your will. Lord, in this time of preparation and reflection, we ask that we may give to you a small token in remembrance, honor, and gratitude for your Son, Jesus Christ. Because of his birth, life, and death, we are restored in your sight, and this brings us great peace. Holy God, may we be quick to serve you with our whole heart like Mary, like the wise men, may our eyes be open to your presence. May we follow where you lead, and may our offerings given from grateful hearts be worthy in your eyes. Through the Holy Spirit, help us to stand firm in your word and seek your will regardless of personal cost, just like Joseph. Lord, like the shepherds watching their flocks, Hear our praise, feel our love, and equip us to protect and care for the sheep in your flock, for each is precious in your sight. Lord, let us be a blessing to you like the baby in the manger. May others see the hope of your son Jesus Christ in our words, our actions, and may we play a part in bringing them to you. We ask all of this, Lord, and as a congregation, we unite our voices together as we pray the prayer your Son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. In New York's Hayden Planetarium, a special Christmas holiday show featured giant lollipop trees decorated onto the planetarium dome, surrounded by a horizon filled with brilliantly colored toys that came to life and danced to the tune of Jingle Bells. At the finale, a huge figure of Santa Claus faded in a snowstorm, and the Star of Bethlehem broke through onto a reproduction of the Palestinian sky. I bet that was something to behold. Now, I don't know about you, but I love a Charlie Brown Christmas. It runs a close second in my book to Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer featuring Burl Ives just in case you were interested. Well, the sad little Christmas tree in Charlie Brown was very symbolic as the gang had two different ideas as to what Christmas was all about. Much like the planetarium display that went from Santa Claus to the Star of Bethlehem, there were those in a Charlie Brown Christmas who wanted the glitz and the flash of a commercial Christmas, while Linus inspired us with his retelling of the true meaning of Christmas from the Gospel of Luke. If you will now, hear those words. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in their field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign to you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, 
and on earth peace, good will toward men. After quoting these lines from Scripture, Linus ended saying, That's what Christmas is all about, Charlie Brown. And you know what? Linus was exactly right. At its core, this season is about the gift that God gave the world. But that gift represents so much more than just the date on the calendar awaited by children and retailers. The gift of God's Son resulted in God being with us in human form, forever changing the way humans interact with God. So if Christmas had a humble beginning, what happened? How did it become more about our presence, our gifts, and less about the presence of God among us? While I'll save that message for another time, it's clear that we all celebrate Christmas for our own reasons, whether we're religious or not. Even the Grinch wondered, maybe Christmas doesn't come from a store. Christmas, perhaps, means a little bit more. No matter how or why we celebrate Christmas, we shouldn't let the spirit of Christmas leave us when we go to bed on December 25th. The themes of this season can be found on the Advent wreath. Hope, peace, joy, and love. We need them throughout the year, every year of our lives. We shouldn't overlook the ways they're essential to our well-being, to our health and wholeness, to the world around us. Have you ever noticed that our culture tends to focus on the needs of others so much more this time of year than the rest? Charitable giving becomes more prominently advertised. Nonprofit organizations see an influx of donations. Something about the holidays makes us feel kind-hearted and compassionate which is wonderful, but what about the rest of the year? Where's the spirit of generosity then? Just as most of us wouldn't want to display that meager Charlie Brown Christmas tree in our own homes, we should also be embarrassed by the meager faith that doesn't take us out of ourselves and our salvation to actually see others, how they are, where they are. Can we accept the fact that Christ became flesh to show us the right way to live as human beings. If God allowed himself to take the form of his greatest creation, then surely being human is the highest form of humility. This is who we are, made for better things than exchanging polite little greetings and reflecting on the blessings of the season. Dietrich Bonhoeffer, a German pastor who died at the hands of the Nazis, chose to fight for the right rather than accept the wrong. He said, God becomes human, really human. While we endeavor to grow out of our humanity, to leave our human nature behind us, God becomes human. And we must recognize that God wants us also to be human, really human. Whereas we distinguish between the godly and the godless, the good and the evil, the noble and the common, God loves real human beings without distinction. I believe that each of us has the responsibility of lifting up the lives of others, to leave people better than we found them. This isn't just a Christian perspective, though. It's a human necessity. God isn't present, even if we call upon him where the afflicted are merely regarded as a means for doing good. If we believe that God is with us, but we leave ourselves and our responsibilities out of the relationship of us, then we have a meager faith. We round out our faith. We fill out our humanity when we're available to others, when we see the suffering around us, feel the feelings we so badly want to suppress, and then act accordingly. When tragedy strikes in this world, some people may be tempted to say that God is absent. It may only seem that way, though, because so many of us are absent, withholding our prayers with our meager faith. 
withholding our gifts because of our minuscule love. While it's true that we can't do everything, we can do something. We can be the hands, the feet, the heart of God who shared those very same human attributes with us. He didn't find the poor, the grieving, the diseased, or the pathetic detestable. He looked into their eyes and blessed them with compassion, love, healing, dignity. And just so you're aware, his cause hasn't changed, and the cries of his children haven't gone away. Ears that hear, eyes that see, a heart that understands. One who sees the broken pieces they're holding in their hands. Eyes that tear up with emotion, ears that hear what they can't say. A heart that beats with feeling, helping to soothe their pain away. Ears that hear the silent cries, a heart that feels the breaking. A soul who knows that kind of pain, the anguish, depth of aching. Ears that listen patiently, eyes that see through tears. An empathetic, caring heart that understands their fears. An old novel tells of a small Welsh town where every year for the past 500 years, the people all gather in church on Christmas Eve and pray. Shortly before midnight, they light candle lanterns singing carols and hymns as they walk down a country path several miles to an old abandoned stone shack. There they set up a nativity scene complete with manger. Then, in simple piety, they kneel and pray. There's a myth in that town, a belief that if all citizens are present on Christmas Eve, and if all are praying with perfect faith, then and only then, at the stroke of midnight, the second coming will be at hand. And for 500 years they've come to that stone ruin and prayed, but the second coming has eluded them. One of the main characters in this novel is asked, Do you believe that he will come again on Christmas Eve in our town? No, he answers, shaking his head sadly. No, I don't. Then why do you go each year? Ah, he says, smiling. What if I were the only one who wasn't there when it happened? Well, that's a meager faith he has. But you know what? It is some faith. And with some faith, great things can happen if we're courageous enough to let God lead. Friends, have peace, hope, joy, and love this Christmas. And not only for yourself and those closest to you, but desire the same for every person on this earth. We don't need to be afraid of extending a hand of kindness or a gesture of goodwill because it might cost us something. We should only be afraid if we find ourselves unable to do it because we're simply unwilling to. I'd like to close with the prayer that would be our prayer not only as we approach that holy night, but on every night. Would you pray with me? Make us worthy, Lord, to serve you and all your people who live and die in loneliness, hunger, poverty, and sickness. Give them through our hands this day their daily bread. And by our love, give them some peace and joy. Amen. Streams of
Till you came and rescued me I was bound by all my sins When your love came and set me free Now my soul can sing a new song Now my heart has found a home Now your grace is always with me And I'll never be alone There is a candle In every soul Some brightly burning Some dark and cold There is a spirit Brings a fire, ignites a candle, and makes his home. So carry your candle and run to the darkness. Seek out the hopeless, the confused and torn. Hold out your candle for all to see. Seek out the hope. 